So how exactly would high intensity training help with endurance or endurance training? In today's video, we're gonna go over just that. But before I do, hit the like, subscribe, and the bell notification icon so you can be notified when I provide fact-based, evidence-based exercise advice, all right? So let's get into it. So a lot of people ask me all the time how this is going to help improve endurance or stamina, okay? There's a couple of false assumptions about endurance and stamina that we need to address first. Mostly, that endurance and stamina is a general adaptation that transfers between different activities. Now we have local muscular endurance, we have cardiovascular efficiency, and we have metabolic efficiency. These things will transfer from activity to activity, but it won't be as noticeable as a lot of people may expect. A lot of people are under the impression that if I go jogging or I go sprinting, it's gonna help them in, let's say, MMA fighting or Muay Thai or, or boxing. You know, you see a lot, of, a lot of individuals jogging for boxing under the impression that, you know, if I get better at jogging, that means my cardiovascular system improved, that means my endurance and my stamina improved, and they assume, erroneously, that this improvement transfers to their particular sport. But this is not true. This is pure, utter folklore in the fitness industry, and we have evidence to back it up, okay? So this is under the assumption that if I perform some activity, it's gonna improve overall stamina, overall all endurance, but there's no such thing. There's no such thing as improving general stamina in general endurance because it is a combination of physical capacity, which can be improved by exercise, and economy of effort or economy of movement or skill, okay? So <clears throat> let's break it down a little further. There was a study, um, a couple studies actually, and um, the studies were provided in this book, Body by Science. It's a great book on exercise and the science behind it. Now, there was a study performed in 1977 where they were looking to measure endurance by measuring VO2 max. So what they did was they took a couple groups of individuals. They took you know, um, elite cross-country skiers and runners, and then they had them switch activities to see if that VO2 max improvement transferred to the other activity. Guess what? It didn't. Cross-country skiers, even though their VO2 max improved in cross-country skiing, did not show an improvement when they went running. And the runners, vice versa. So this is a clear indication that endurance, stamina, even VO2 max is specific to the activity. Meaning, when you practice an activity more, your efficiency at performing that activity improves. You will, lose, you will use less muscular effort, you will use less cardiovascular, there will be a smaller cardiovascular demand, there will be a smaller metabolic demand, because your body finds efficient ways to perform the activities without using a lot of resources, draining you of energy, creating inflammation, and all the negative things associated with a lot of physical activity. Your body is super adaptive and adapts this way. So the more you practice a particular activity, the more efficient your body will become at it. And that is really what endurance and stamina is, okay? So if you wanna improve endurance or stamina, you have to, first of all, there are two sides of it, improve the general, trainable, transferable factors of functional ability, cardiovascular, in metabolic uh, efficiency and fitness, muscular strength, bone and connective tissue strength, all those things can be improved from exercise and transfer between activities, but then there's a specific component. You must practice the specific activity and become more efficient at it. It will become easier and your endurance and stamina will go up. Despite what a lot of ridiculously misled coaches believe, they believe this, there's no evidence, they're, they're just flat wrong, 
You cannot just improve overall endurance. You cannot just improve overall stamina. If you stress your muscles and you improve the general trainable factors, you will see slight improvements from activity to activity, but there is not one activity that you can do that improves stamina and endurance across the board in every activity. That's just not how this works. Now, there was another study that involved swimmers and they measured the VO2 max with swimming and then tested them on treadmills running. And although their VO2 max was extremely good and this was done in 1975, that's how long we've known this. Even though their VO2 max and their endurance and their stamina was good in swimming, tremendous in swimming, no improvement when they tested them running. So if you're looking for an activity to improve overall endurance and overall stamina, there isn't one. This is where high intensity training comes in. You wanna use the most effective, efficient, safe way to stress the muscles intensely to stimulate the general trainable transferable factors of cardiovascular and metabolic efficiency and muscle strength. And then you wanna practice your skill. Now there are many, many ways you can stress your muscles and get a cardiovascular benefit, but weight training, resistance training, or more specifically high intensity resistance training seems to be the most efficient, okay? It is another complete myth that steady state cardio or steady state locomotive, low intensity repetitive activity is essential for cardiovascular fitness. There is a study done by James Steele, James Fisher in the UK back in, uh, I wanna say 2013 or 2012, which found by looking at all the data and reviewing all the data that resistance training resulted in the exact same improvements in cardiovascular at the it, cardiovascular improvements at the um, molecular level and at the peripheral level. The same exact improvements were made with strength training as steady state cardio. Now, this may drive people insane, okay? Because again, when you become indoctrinated, it's very difficult to let go of your beliefs and your belief systems, but these are just the facts, okay? I'm just sharing the facts. You can go jogging, do whatever the hell you want. It doesn't affect my life. I really don't care. But for those of you who are short on time or you don't like doing steady state activity and you're worried that you need to do additional jogging, running, biking, whatever for your heart, you don't. I'll link the study in the description below. Read the thing, take some time, read it. It's irrefutable, you don't. Personally, myself and all my coaching clients have resting heart rates at highest in the 50s, okay? Strength training once or twice per week, okay? So the cardio, uh, endurance, stamina training stuff is nonsense, okay? So just to reiterate everything, and I'll link those two VO2 max studies in the description below too. If you want to improve, I guess the question is how does high intensity training improve endurance? It doesn't because you're not practicing the specific skill that you want to improve your stamina or endurance with. But what high intensity training does is improve local muscular endurance, metabolic and cardiovascular efficiency at a transferable level. And then what you have to do outside of your high intensity training is simply practice that activity which you want to become more efficient at and improve endurance with. And this will take steady state repetition type stuff because the nervous system adapts differently than your musculoskeletal system and your cardiovascular and your metabolic system, okay? So intense strength training, practice skill, endurance and stamina. It's literally that simple. And if you haven't ever read it, pick up the book Body by Science by Dr. Doug McGuff and John Little, and then read the, the research cited in the back. They have all the research cited in the back. I review a lot of the stuff and I learn a ton about exercise just by reading through the research, all right? And the truth is most of the fitness beliefs are just indoctrinated folklore and, and just that, they're just beliefs. But when you actually look at the evidence, the hard evidence and the facts, it doesn't really seem to mesh what 
with what the common beliefs are out there, okay? Which is good because it saves us all a ton of time. It saves us all a ton of time and we can get in extremely good shape without taking a lot of time to do it. One, two workouts a week, if you do it correctly. <laughs> Not one to two workouts a week um, based on what your average Planet Fitness bozo is doing. No, 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 no. One to two workouts a week my way. And if you want to learn a high intensity training approach that's going to get you these crazy results in one to two workouts a week, click the link in the description, book a call with me, join my coaching. We'll make your body We'll get you in the best condition, best shape you've ever been in your life, regardless of age, regardless of experience. It happens every time. All right? So that's it. Check out Body by Science. Read the literature. I'll put it in the description below. If you don't believe me, read it for yourself. Take some time out of your day. You know, instead of fighting with other people in the comments, read the damn literature and educate yourself. Super easy. All right? Don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and the bell. So you can be notified when I drop another video. See you later.